Hello everyone. Welcome to our latest webinar on what's new with the October 2020 release of WSO2 Open Backy release. So uh, today's webinar is presented by me, Lalaji, and my colleague, Imeshu Mayanga. So I lead the research and development team while contributing to shaping the solution by helping out with the architectural decisions. And Imesh is a software engineer in WSO2 Open Banking team. And also he is the release manager for Open Banking 2.0, which was released in the October. So during today's session, we'll start with a brief introduction about our Open Banking solution. And then we'll go into the new capabilities we have introduced with uh, version 2.0, along with some brief demos for the solution. And finally, we'll wind up the session with a look at uh, our future roadmap for WSO2 Open Banking. So uh, remember, this session is interactive, and we look forward to answering the questions you raise in the chat lab. So let's start with the evolution of the Open Banking movement and how WSO2 has been involved in this journey since its beginning. So this picture is a bird's eye view of where we are with open banking. So from our very beginning in 2005 up to 2017, we have been involved with banks on open banking projects uh, driven by their market needs, not by regulators. Uh, and uh, importantly, uh, so many large banks and progressive tier two banks were mainly invested in uh, enabling APIs in their bank platform and indirectly enable uh, open banking in a secured manner. Especially uh, in the USA, the progressive and larger banks noticed the potential for revenue growth with uh, API technology and they began to make financial data available via APIs. So based on the power of our middleware solutions uh, at WSO2, uh, we have been involved in many such projects, which uh, focus on the potential business benefits of open banking. So in 2017, there was a significant change in the industry. That's with the uh, Payment Service Directive 2 coming into the enforcement in Europe region. So in regulated countries, uh, open banking became a mandatory requirement for all the banks without limiting to digitally matured banks. So to address this requirement, we launched the WSO open banking solution formally uh, back in 2017. So after that, uh, many more global regulatory initiatives have merged for open banking in countries like Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, the Middle East, Canada, and recently uh, in Latin America and USA as well. But uh, in these early days of regulations, the intention around open banking was limited to compliance. Uh, however, uh, in the last year or so, we have seen a shift in this approach with uh, more banks looking uh, for the commercial potential of open banking uh, and uh, banking API ecosystems have matured with more use cases to build revenue and grow business. So same time, the pandemic situation uh, with consumer demand for more digital banking solutions has also contributed to banks taking a uh, more open-minded approach to open banking. So with this shift from uh, regulatory compliance uh, towards more digital transformation use cases, we too have formalized a model to cater with our in-house capabilities uh, of comprehensive technology stack together with consultancy based on our previous experience in the UK, Europe, uh, Australia, and other regions. So uh, now let me give you an overview about WSO2 Open Banking solution, which was built with the purpose of securing regulatory compliance for banks, while at the same time enabling the broad commercial use cases and digital transformation. 
So uh, WSO Open Banking is a, a comprehensive single vendor solution. Uh, this means uh, we provide all the technology requirements of open banking based on our underlying API management, identity and access management, analytics, and optionally uh, enterprise integration capabilities. Uh, we provide accelerated compliance to global open banking standards like uh, the Open Banking UK standard from OBIE, the Berlin Group NextGen PSD2 standard, and the Australian uh, Consumer Data Rights Standard. The solution we provide is uh, bundled with uh, consultancy uh, to help you deploy and actually uh, use our technology. So today's our focus will be mostly on our technology offering. So uh, if you are wondering how uh, WSO to open banking helps with uh, both regulatory compliance and uh, also for digital transformation. Uh, this slide uh, explains the comprehensive uh, features set offered by our solution to cater such uh, different bank requirements. So in high level, uh, main capabilities are about API technology, uh, then API and consumer data security, and value-added services offered for API consumers, and finally the integration capabilities uh, with uh, analytics capabilities. So by default, the WSO Open Banking solution is uh, equipped with a set of standards based API templates. Uh, those are based on emerging open banking global standards like uh, the open banking standard from UK, the Berlin Group next gen PSD2 the consumer data standards in Australia. So what banks have to do is uh, set up our solution and connect the available API templates to their core banking systems to get the compliance much faster and at a much lower cost. So we also provide uh, the uh, support for accelerating compliance with uh, each new version of these standards as well. And supporting these emerging standards has made it easy for us uh, for help to meet the requirements coming from uh, the next emerging standards like uh, Brazilian or Mexican standards uh, or the Middle East uh, regulatory standards. So then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our open banking solution is not bound only to regulatory APIs but also uh, it allows creating custom APIs, uh, beneficial for partners or consumers. So banks can get uh, revenue streams in return. So bank API creators can define custom premium APIs specific to their business goals uh, using our solution and get monetized them uh, via partners or in consumers. So with the underlying power of uh, our uh, WSO API management platform, uh, open banking solution allows uh, creating a very powerful and highly performant custom APIs and uh, integrate those with uh, third party bidding engines like uh, Stripe, PayPal for monetization purposes. So when exposing bank data as secured APIs to third parties, it's uh, really essential to ensure the data is only exposed to credible partners or consumers. And uh, the third party consumers should also get uh, superior user experience. So to support this safe and uh, rich uh, use experienced access, uh, WSO to Open Banking has uh, inbuilt different approaches for uh, third party reg registration uh, like uh, dynamic client registration or manual client registration options, either as API invocations or as uh, UI directions. So the, the registration options can uh, chosen by bank uh, according to its preference or based on uh, uh, applicable standards. And uh, we also provide a fully featured uh, API developer portal uh, it will enable more and more application developers to reuse bank APIs 
to build uh, innovations for consumers. This is a centralized API catalog for application developers to discover, subscribe, uh, test, and engage with the banks. And uh, it will be easy to extend the developer portal into an internal or public API marketplace uh, with the uh, inbuilt capabilities of the solution. Uh, the enhanced consumer authentication mechanism support is a priority in the open banking journey, uh, which will provide a superior experience for consumers. Uh, this is important uh, to be addressed well uh, to ensure the security of uh, banking data and also to build the trust among consumers. Uh, Multi-factor authentication support is a main feature in our solution uh, and uh, it supports uh, authentication approaches like redirect, decouple for both uh, web and mobile flows and uh, with underlying uh, WSO2 identity and access management platform capabilities, uh, our solution has inbuilt support for different authentication mechanisms like SMS OTP, FIDO, DUO, or even uh, the authentication types can be customized as per bank's requirements. The whole uh, open banking journey uh, centered ar uh, around uh, bank customers' consent for data sharing. So consumer consent management is a main feature required for uh, the global open banking trends. So if it done properly, this will help uh, bank customers to feel empowered and in control of their data uh, because they know who access their data and for what purpose. So our solution supports uh, comprehensive consent management with uh, supporting the full consent lifecycle and uh, it supports uh, multiple consent models from different global standards and uh, consists of uh, securely exposed consent data APIs and uh, inbuilt user interfaces for the consent management. Uh, so those uh, user interfaces uh, are accessed by both bank customers and bank staff. And all this comes built in with the solution and also uh, those are compliant with global standards. So uh, we can say our consent management module is more matured with the time uh, and the involvement we did uh, with implementing <coughs> different global standards. And uh, the end goal of open banking is to expose uh, bank data as secure APIs. So it's crucial for financial APIs to make sure uh, the confidentiality and integrity of data uh, and uh, WSO Open Banking Solution has uh, built-in support for the uh, industry-leading uh, Open ID Connect Financial Grade API, in other words, FAPI security profiles. So uh, we uh, already have been certified with uh, this Open ID FAPI uh, security profile and it's the global uh, security profile used in many of the open banking standards. And uh, uh, with the O2, Open ID Connect and uh, mutual TLS support, uh, data security has been a main uh, capability. Uh, when uh, uh, when supporting the data security aspect from our solution. So then the built-in uh, fraud detection capabilities uh, also help to increase uh, confidence in open banking for consumers and for banks. So with any system that involves explosive financial data, fraud prevention uh, naturally becomes a primary focus. So the fraud detection module is fully extensible uh, to write custom fraud rules and also to connect with different alerting systems. The last uh, part of the most important features of open banking are about banking system integration and analytics. So with banking system integration, 
uh, it will ensure the uh, to connect siloed systems in the bank through one open banking platform and uh, wso to open banking solution is equipped with uh, fully empowered integration capabilities with the underlying wso integration platform uh, it's like it do support different message uh, format transitions like uh, rest to soap or iso 222 uh, iso 8583 uh, tra- uh, message format transformations and also it have inbuilt capabilities to connect to different legacy systems via um, powerful mediation layer and with analytics capabilities uh, our solution enable uh, uh, banks to build uh, business insights around uh, consumer behavior so it will help to further personalize the consumer experience and uh, the analytics component support uh, storing uh, raw data from uh, incoming api traffic and then summarize those uh, raw data into useful formats and finally expose as apis or dashboards and our analytics module is uh, fully extensible to connect with the uh, third party reporting systems to generate uh, reports based on regulatory requirements or custom requirements so uh, with the comprehensive feature set explained uh, in previous slide you may wonder what type of use cases can be achieved from our solution and from the open banking standards so in high level there are three sets of api categories that banks have looked into as the account and product information api the payment api and the premium apis in other words premium apis means the custom financial apis created for uh, partners to get uh, revenue streams uh, in return for the banks so the account and product information apis uh, expose bank customer account details like balances transactions also product information like product types interest rates so uh, this api category is heavily used to derive use cases for aggregation comparison credit scoring and kyc verification next uh, the payment api category allows doing financial operations as a real time account to account payments or check for the availability of funds in an account so this api category is used for use cases like real time account to account payments from fintech mobile apps do quick refunds or payment reversals and the premium apis category includes uh, monetizing uh, custom apis uh, exposed from banks to partners or consumers beyond uh, the regulatory compliance so as examples uh, like get details of a uh, bank customer spending patterns throughout the year or customer information about uh, his mortgage or loan details so such custom apis are very valuable because it uh, those will be help to create use cases like uh, personal or semi financial management or advanced lending and credit scoring or many more so important fact of these use cases is uh, that they allow opening new uh, revenue streams for banks because uh, those use cases help to manage bank customers future from their behavioral patterns from history so up to now i have explained about wso to open banking and now we are moving to the most important part of today's webinar to get to know about open banking latest release 2.0 our team has put a tremendous effort in the last couple of months to get the open banking 2.0 release out so uh, something i am really excited to tell you about our latest release is the support for microservices architecture with the introduction of the new api micro gateway for uh, open banking solution with the new addition of the micro gateway it helps bank staff to easily manage deployment uh, in a container friendly manner and also it help the banks uh, open back in deployments uh, time to market to be reduced 
So we introduce a lightweight open battery micro gateway as a new component. Uh, and uh, it act as a proxy for microservices with uh, enrichment capabilities for authentication, rate limiting, analytics. And the main features of this uh, new open micro microgateway are it's scalable uh, independently. Uh, and uh, also it has inbuilt support for container orchestration tools. And then uh, it's fully cloud native, which is designed as lightweight and able to deploy in self-service, elastic or cloud infrastructures, and uh, it's de decentralized. So one micro gateway can handle uh, requests per one API endpoint. So as an example, one micro gateway can handle uh, get accounts requests, while uh, another micro gateway can serve uh, get balances API endpoint requests. So the next two uh, important features of the micro gateway are uh, its developer focus and immutable. So the API in micro gateway can be designed as an open API definition and the micro gateway can build using that open API definition. But once the micro gateway is deployed, uh, it cannot be changed further. So this is the high level architecture of a typical open back deployment with all the components uh, in it. The micro gateway can uh, be used to route traffic to microservices while regular gateway can be used to route the traffic to usual web services. But the API enrichment services are offered as same for the both gateway types. So now I'll be handing over the webinar to Imesh to proceed with the micro gateway demo and then walk us through the updates done for Australia consumer data standards. Over to you, Imesh. Yeah, uh, thanks, Lalaji. And uh, hi, everyone. I'm Imesh Shumayanga. I work as a software engineer in WSO2 Open Banking team and I acted as the release manager for the Open Banking 2.0 release. So uh, Lalaji was explaining about uh, micro gateway. Uh, I will start with the micro gateway demonstration. So uh, for the micro gateway demonstration, first we will take a look at the YAML file used to create an API. And then we will uh, see how the micro gateway is started and the APIs are invoked. So uh, this is the YAML file used to create the micro gateway we are talking about. So uh, this particular ML file is for the consumer data standards uh, version 1.3.0. So if you are familiar with the uh, SIGA specifications, uh, you will see some uh, properties related to API definitions here. So uh, from those properties, what I want to highlight uh, today is uh, at the end of this file, you can see a uh, you can see a property called uh, XWSO2 endpoints. So under that, there are two endpoints called production endpoint and sandbox endpoint. So uh, this is the endpoint uh, which the request coming to the micro gateway will be redirected. So uh, currently we have pointed it to our banking, uh, sorry, our mock backend. So in real world use cases, uh, the banks will be uh, uh, putting their uh, actual banking backend URL here. So that's about the YAML file. So now I'm going to start a micro gateway using that YAML file for, uh, so uh, I'll be using a, a pre-written script for this. So if I uh, run that script, you can see the micro gateway is starting. So uh, earlier Lalaji talked about uh, micro gateway being so lightweight. So Actually, you can see that here, the micro gateway uh, starts in almost like uh, less than five or six seconds. So now, now I'm going to call the micro gateway that I just started. So uh, you can see I have uh, here pointed the uh, port to the micro gateway port and uh, I'm trying to call the product API here. So uh, if I send this call, I should get the product details of this particular product as a response. So yeah, uh, as you can see, I got 
the particular response with the product details of the product I requested. So that's it for the micro gateway section. Uh, next, we are going to talk about uh, what are the new features we have provided to align with the open banking standards uh, in each specification. So uh, we will start with the consumer data standards uh, version 1.3.1, which is also known as uh, CDS. So uh, there, first we will talk about the CDR arrangement management API, which is a newly introduced API in this uh, open banking 2.0 release. So this API is used to revoke an existing uh, sharing arrangement, which the user has already given their consent to. So when this API is called, it also deletes the associated uh, refresh show access tokens. Uh, so this feature is mandatory from uh, November 2020. So here you can see a sample URI, which is used to uh, call the API. So next uh, we will move on to the push authorization of Pine Point. So uh, the Pine Point is an uh, alternative to the existing authorization mechanism. It has been introduced to overcome some of the drawbacks of the existing authorization endpoint. So uh, here you can see some of the benefits uh, of this uh, Pine Point or the uh, older authorization mechanism. So uh, one of the main uh, differences between this uh, Pine Point and the old authorization mechanism is that uh, here we will be uh, sending the request object as a post call uh, before the actual uh, authorization uh, uh, request is sent. So the uh, request object will be included as the uh, uh, request uh, as the uh, request object of the uh, this post call, and uh, another advantage of this is that. Uh, the post call is far more secure than the get call used in the older authorization call. And also we can overcome the browser length limits that we faced earlier with uh, the older authorization call. And also uh, in the Pine point, uh, all the request object validations will be done before the end use is actually uh, redirected to the uh, authorization endpoint for login and consent. So those are some advantages of this uh, Pine Point or the older authorization mechanism. So, and of course, there is uh, more to get to know about the Pine Point. So please visit the documentation we have linked here if you are interested more. Next, we are going to talk about the enhanced CX guideline support for API flows. As you already know, CDS mandates using identifier first as the primary authentication step for authorization. So on this slide, you can see the uh, see our improved uh, UI for the uh, identifier first sign in and uh, SMS OTP authentication. So those UI is aligned with uh, the CDS uh, CX guidelines. So, uh, and uh, it may have uh, this. Uh, Identifier first authentication may have certain security risks, and uh, to overcome those, we have implemented the security requirements uh, defined in the CDS specification. And on top of that, we have introduced additional security measures to prevent any enumeration attack in the sign in step and the uh, brute force attacks which may occur uh, in the OTP step. So in this slide, you can see the updated consent granting step according to the CX guidelines. So uh, this will allow the end users to review what are the data they are sharing and uh, what is the sharing period, what accounts are used and uh, who is the data recipient they are sharing their data with. And uh, so next we are moving on to the consumer data standard specification demonstration. So here I will uh, demonstrate you the new features that we just discussed. So first, I'm going to show you the uh, PAR request 
So here I have set up my Postman uh, environment to send this power request. You can see this is a post call and uh, I have pointed the URL to our power endpoint. And I have included the uh, request object here. And uh, if I send this request object, I'm getting a, a URL, a reference URL to this uh, uh, request object. So what the Py endpoint does is it will store the request object in our server and it will give a reference to refer this uh, request object. So if you observe the response I got, uh, you can see the uh, this uh, reference will expire in 60 seconds. So I'm going to copy this uh, request URI and this is my authorization call. So I'm going to paste the URI here. And I have set up the other parameters beforehand. So I'm going to call this uh, So as you can see, I was redirected to the uh, identify first login page. So I'm going to give my username here. And now I should get an uh, OTP to my mobile phone. So I'm going to enter the code here. When I click authenticate, I'm prompted to, to uh, select the account I want to use. And uh, in this uh, window, I can uh, review the uh, data that I'm sharing. So here you can see the data that I'm sharing, and uh, here the sharing period I'm sharing the data for one day. And the account I selected is here. And uh, this is the data recipient I'm going to share my data with. So after reviewing all those data, I'm going to click on confirm. And as you can see, I got a, uh, I got an authorization code here. So to proceed further, uh, I can copy this authorization code and get a uh, user access token for that and call the secure uh, banking endpoints using that access token yeah uh, so that's it for the cds specification demonstration uh, next we are going to talk about the non-functional requirements of the cds specification so cds has defined uh, several non-functional requirements and uh, those fall under the categories of performance uh, session availability and traffic thresholds so if we take a look at uh, the performance requirements, uh, the specification has categorized the API calls into five tiers uh, according to their characteristics. And uh, each tier has a defined maximum round trip time. So uh, as an example for high priority calls, the server should respond within one second. So you can see further details uh, related to this on the table. So next I'm going to uh, talk about the traffic threshold. So talking about the traffic thresholds, the API traffic can be divided into four scenarios uh, as customer present traffic, unattended traffic, uh, secure traffic and public traffic. And uh, the specification has defined thresholds limiting the number of sessions, TPS and number of calls for each scenario. Uh, so you can see further details on this table. So uh, here we are going to talk about the regulatory reporting requirements. So uh, CDS has defined certain data points to be uh, included in their phase one reports. And uh, we are collecting those data and uh, persisting them in our reporting database uh, during API invocations. So uh, we have exposed the REST API to obtain those data and generate reports. So you can see a sample response of this uh, said the uh, endpoint on this slide. So it contains details like uh, 
total number of invocations and also four invocations. So it has categorized the four invocations into four parts. And you can see those uh, counts in the response. So uh, talking about the additional features we are supporting, uh, we are providing the feature of supporting multiple consents for the same data recipient and customer combination. And uh, this feature will be enforced from uh, November 2020 onwards. So what's next for Australian consumer data standards? So we will be providing continuous updates for version 1.3.1 and onwards. And uh, we have planned enhancements for data reporting. And also we are working on revamping our consent management tech uh, using interfaces to provide a better consumer experience. So that's it for the uh, Australian consumer data standards. So next time I will hand over the presentation to uh, Lalaji to talk about uh, OBI's Open Banking Standard version 3.1.5. Over to Lalaji. So, uh... So let me uh, walk you through the updates we have done for OBI's uh, open banking standard. So uh, the uh, main uh, difference is like uh, if we compare with the previous uh, uh, versions of the open banking UK uh, standard, uh, there are only minor updates happen for accounts payments and confirmation of funds APIs. Uh, and we already have uh, incorporated those changes to Open Maggi 2.0. And uh, with uh, Open Maggi 2.0, we have worked on revamping all the user interfaces of the solution to be more fresh looked. And uh, so that will help consumers and bank staff journey uh, to be more easy. So at the same time, uh, we have done some UX enhancements according to uh, the latest consumer gu experience guidelines published in OBIE. And uh, next, uh, to make the interactions easier between banks and the third parties, uh, there is a separate event notification specification defining the OBI standard. And we have enabled aggregated polling support, which will allow uh, TPPs to request uh, aggregated set of uh, events on revocation and uh, account access events happen uh, for a specific period by uh, multiple bank customers. As additional features, uh, we do have upgraded management information reporting spec version 312 and uh, with the uh, waiver 7 uh, enforcement uh, removed from June 20. 2020, uh, uh, we have been uh, uh, support uh, JSON uh, web signature validation uh, as a default feature. So all the incoming TPP requests are being validated with uh, its signature. So what's next? So uh, we are currently working on uh, Open Method Standard version 316 upgrade and also will be updated to other continuous uh, spec versions coming in the future. And uh, importantly, with the Brexit situation, FC has made decision to be uh, move out from PSD to EIDAS certificates for UK third party providers. So we are doing an impact analysis to identify if any changes to make in our solution on certification validation modules. So from the Berlin Next Gen PSD2 framework, we have upgraded the version to 1.3.6. And uh, in that also, it contains minor updates for accounts and payments APIs. And we have incorporated those changes in the open banking 2.0 release. And uh, we have started adding support for uh, confirmation of funds consent. This is uh, defined in the uh, next gen ps2 as a separate uh, uh, extended service and uh, we have enabled this support in open Bagit 2 and uh, what's next with uh, berlin next gen ps2 so we will be supporting uh, the newer versions coming from the uh, spec 
And at the moment, we are working on 1.3.8 update, and we are working on supporting more extended services like multiple consent management or push service notifications. And same time, Berlin Group has uh, published uh, there is a separate standard for open finance. We are looking forward uh, if there could be uh, any changes for the Berlin Group Next Gen PSD2 standard from this, uh, and if there are to align those changes. So up to now, uh, we have talked about regulatory compliance APIs, but uh, it's important to note uh, WSO open banking is not only bound to regulatory compliance, but uh, it enables banks to create more premium uh, APIs, uh, which can utilize by partners and banks can get revenue in return, uh, which is opposed to the regulatory APIs, which I expose as free. So same time we have enabled some more features to enhance user experience through our solution. So let's explore them. So uh, uh, I'll first explain commercial capabilities, uh, which we do offer by default. Uh, with the underlying uh, WSO2 API Manager platform capabilities, our solution version 2.0 does support API monetization. So banks can define different business models, either consumers pay for API usage as uh, tier uh, pay as you go pricing, or consumers get paid for the uh, financial API usage, like uh, true affiliated marketing, or banks can define indirect revenue models with uh, integrating more business use cases like uh, e-commerce platform integrations. And uh, API monetization feature do support uh, integrating with different third-party bidding systems. And out of the box, we do support Stripe integration with different pricing models. So these are uh, some of the user interfaces to define billing plans and how to enable monetization per API in a publisher portal of open banking. So next important commercial feature introduced with open banking 2.0 is the API productization capability. So with the API product concept, a bank API publishers can repackage the existing financial APIs in various combinations uh, to create tailor-made experience for, for the uh, API consumers. For example, let's take uh, if a bank have a leasing API and a customer info API, which do single different uh, service offerings, and the bank uh, can create a product called leasing API product and uh, utilize some of the uh, services from these individual APIs and then get, get those uh, uh, combination of uh, functions as a monetized API product. So this is really a value added feature of the bank uh, because uh, they can create custom revenue generation use cases as API products out from uh, open banking APIs and expose them to specific partners or consumers. So uh, apart from that, uh, uh, we do support uh, first class support for GraphQL. So in order to uh, increase the profit margins of the digital transformation story, uh, it's really important of a bank to keep an eye on the latest innovations and technologies. The use of GraphQL has grown exponentially with its open source version. So thereafter, many technology-based businesses adjusted to this new concept because uh, GraphQL is more efficient in uh, API-based applications than REST. So that will help banks to expand its businesses as there are many third-party organization and developers already have started GraphQL. So with the underlying WSO API management capabilities, uh, our solution do allow uh, out of the box support for create GraphQL APIs and define operational level authentication, access control policies, define rate limiting, operational level analytics, and also uh, API consumers can easily discover uh, and consume these GraphQL APIs from the developer portal very easily. 
So these are some of the user interfaces in uh, Publisher UI. Uh, with the capabilities to create GraphQL from uh, its schema definitions. And then once uh, it's created, how the overview page look like. So now I'm hand over again to my colleague Imesh to proceed with the next demo. Yeah, uh, thanks Laraji. So for the premium uh, open banking features demos, I'm going to show you how to create an uh, API product. And uh, we are going to look at some of the improved the uh, UI features. So in order to create an API product, first I should visit the publisher portal. And I logged into the publisher portal. So if you are familiar with our older open banking versions, uh, you can see that uh, there are many uh, UI improvements here and uh, First of all, you can see the uh, APIs that I have already published here. And uh, here you have the options to create uh, various uh, types of APIs. Uh, you can design a rest, uh, new REST API and uh, you can create an API using an existing uh, API definition. Uh, you can create a SOAP uh, API and uh, also a GraphQL uh, API and a WebSocket API. So since Raraji talked about uh, GraphQL APIs, I will uh, quickly show you uh, how you can create a GraphQL API. So uh, if I go to the option of creating GraphQL uh, API, you get the uh, option to upload a GraphQL SDL schema. So here I can click this uh, browse button and uh, give a uh, GraphQL definition from my computer. So when I uh, upload that and click next, uh, the GraphQL uh, API will be created. So right now I'm not going to show you uh, how the GraphQL API is created. Uh, I'm going to show you how to create an API product. So if I switch to the API products tab here, uh, I get the option of creating a new API product. So as Raji said, uh, we are combining uh, the resources of two APIs here. So I'm going to use the, this customer info API and uh, the leasing API. So if I create a new API product here, I can give a name of my choice. I'm going to give a API product. And I can give a context of my choice. I'm going to give it as this product. And uh, here we have a uh, different business plans. So we have given you a uh, few predefined business plans. Uh, here, uh, I'm going to use this. Uh, Gold business plan which allows 5,000 requests per minute. So, if you want, uh, you can also define your own business plan. And uh, to get to know more details about that, uh, please visit our documentation. So, I'm clicking on gold and uh, I'll click next. So, here on the left side, uh, you can see the APIs that I have already published. So, I want to use this custom info API and leasing API. So I'm going to select two resources from the customer info API. And here I can add the selected uh, resources to the API product. And next I'm going to click this leasing API and uh, add two resources from that also. So uh, if you want, uh, I mean, you can uh, change these configurations. You can remove the uh, selected resources and add them again uh, likewise so after selecting the resources i want i'm going to click click on a uh, publish button and as you can see our api product was uh, created successfully and uh, if you go to this uh, resources pane uh, you can see the resources that i uh, selected are here under the particular apis 
and uh, if i look at the overview i can see the details of this uh, api product so calling this uh, created api product is uh, pretty easy it's almost like uh, calling a, a published api so here you can see the context of this api so you have to combine this context with one of the resources and uh, call it as a uh, usual api so that's it for the premium open banking demonstration uh, i'm again going to hand over the session to lalaji over to lalaji so uh, as uh, imesh uh, showed in the demo so uh, we have revamped uh, the user interfaces of our solution uh, so mostly uh, the reason behind that is like we want to have a new look and feel uh, from the our UIs in the open banky solution. Uh, so that will help uh, the user's journey to be more fresh and to be more easy. Okay, so, uh, uh, so how we have revamped uh, our UIs is based on ReactJS. And we have uh, confirmed to a single page architecture and uh, the way JavaScript dependency system is upgraded to the latest. So banks can customize the user interfaces according to the, their styling guidelines very easily. And uh, opposed to the previous releases in Open Banking 2.0, the configuration model also has changed a lot. It's because uh, instead of having uh, multiple configuration files in uh, one open bag server, there will be only one uh, configuration file uh, and it's on TOML format. So the DevOps experience from the bank side is really easy and it will be only one file to configure per server. So same time TOML format is really easy to read so this will enhance DevOps experience on uh, deploying the WSO2 open banking solution. So hope you all now have a very good understanding about new features we enable for open banking 2.0. Now I'll walk you through some of the highlights in our solutions future roadmap. So at a high level, we are looking to enable more digitally transformed use cases beyond open banking regulatory cases. So we are now uh, looking for more accelerators creation beyond open banking to enable uh, connected digital transformation use cases in the banks, including SME, mortgage, KYC aspects. Uh, those are based on banks' business priorities uh, and we will be ensure those accelerators are reusable. And a uh, federated financial API marketplace means uh, a common marketplace where consumers can explore financial APIs from different banks or from different financial institute or insurance companies. So it's kind of the next arena of uh, open banking based APIs. So with the enhancements, uh, doing for our solution capabilities, we are looking forward to catering such requirements uh, in coming future. And additionally, we are looking for developer focus enhancements in our solution too, to reduce the implementation cost uh, for digital uh, different integration requirements needed, uh, like uh, co-banking connectors, uh, authenticators. So we are trying to uh, write more and more such type of uh, uh, connectors as plugins and get them reusable. And uh, at the moment, the trend uh, of open banking is moving from web to be mobile friendly. So we are trying to enhance the bank customer authentication experience in uh, our solution to be more mobile friendly with uh, support for open ID connect uh, client initiated back channel authentication specification support, which is again the CBA compliance. So hope that will help the uh, bank customer use experience to be much more smooth. So with this, I would also like to briefly give you an overview on how we deliver our solution. 
So as I mentioned earlier, banks are realizing uh, more and more opportunity that open banking offers. So when done right, it's a co-enable for digital transformation. So that means it helps banks to become a lot more agile in how they look both internally and also with external partners. So they can build new services responding to these changes better and take those uh, consumers to market in a way that, uh, that banks will get a, a more commercial edge. So our solution is delivered in a way that help banks realize this opportunity and uh, by delivering them both the technology and the know-how to use that technology uh, with the right strategic approach for their business goals. So uh, while working on banks in UK, EU and Australia, uh, we have been uh, able to understand many uh, problems that banks face around tech, uh, open banking. Of course, uh, we have got questions around technology, like how to deploy the right technology, and then questions around standards, how to comply with regulation at best, uh, or if it's not a regulatory market, what standards are to be adopted. And some uh, banks are worried about internal teams also, because uh, they have questions like they aren't fully aligned and they, are, they can't fully understand what is this open banking, so uh, same time, uh, uh, many banks feel that uh, they don't have the ability to choose or build uh, 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 relationships with uh, fintechs. So to be, de develop the full ecosystem. So they are like looking for help for choosing partners and how to work in together with them. So uh, then the next important questions comes from innovation angle like how do you identify what are the consumer problems you are solving the best and how you work with internal tech teams uh, and bring uh, the right way to build the solution kind of questions. So we understand these questions and what we have found is that in, uh, even in the PO compliance project, a bank must necessarily consider how these uh, different areas apply to them. It's only then uh, they build the capability to evolve with the time uh, is right and uh, in the most efficient manner. So we also understand that answering these questions must always start at the central point of the business goals for the bank. So we have built a technology and consultancy program that helps uh, banks consider all these areas. So with this, uh, we give you technology, uh, which is I outlined earlier in the, our webinar with my colleague Imesh. And uh, most importantly, we also give you the know how to use the technology. So the know, this know how is delivered through a structured consultancy program on technology and open banking strategy. So it is through this combination of technology and consultancy that uh, we will help you all the areas to uh, make for a commercial uh, successful open banking deployment. So if you want to know more about this, uh, please reach to us. And this is a highlight about uh, WSO2 advantage of open banking. So already we have explained all these uh, facts from today's webinar. So uh, this brings to an end what we want to share with you throughout the presentation. Thanks a lot for listening and joining with us today. So let's now look at your questions. Thank you very much.